not gonna lie I had a uh, totally different video in mind when I started the day and then I was filming that kind of cinematic sequence by myself of myself and I was like wait a second this is a whole nother video in and of itself. This is something in film that you'll hear over and over again. It's this idea of coverage. So like if I want to get myself leaving my apartment, getting to my car, heading somewhere else to shoot a video, which like I said, I completely intended on doing that and making a video about completely something different. But then I was like, hey, why don't I just teach on this? And so coverage, instead of me just getting one shot of me leaving my apartment, getting to my car and going somewhere else to shoot a video, I got, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six shots, seven, I guess, if you include this one in total. One other key element of filming yourself along with sequencing is composition. Composition is your best friend when it comes to filming yourself to make it look cinematic and like someone else is actually filming you. Now, I know there's nothing like mind blowing going on here what we're calling an intro or an opening cinematic sequence but that's not the point like to blow people's minds the, the point is to have people's mind think that they're there at the location with you doing whatever you're doing and so we want to give the audience multiple perspectives when we're filming these shots so instead of having one shot we want to have six not for the sake of blowing people's minds but for the sake of having people's mind think that they're actually in the place like watching you do what you do we want to completely remove any inkling that there's even a, a camera watching you it's kind of weird to think about because people act different on camera i act different on camera it's taken me forever uh, to find kind of a, a natural place to where i'm comfortable talking on camera so that's what we want to remove completely so the first shot here in the convenience of my own home have a nice lighting all of the lights in the whole apartment were turned off and we just had the natural light shining from the door back there had the door open natural light coming through in my opinion that's the best light to shoot in my favorite light to shoot in i think probably most people agree with that i love silhouette looks and so you just see kind of the outline of me and what that kind of does is create a little bit of intrigue for the audience like who is that what are they doing what are they about to do almost forgot to talk about sound in this uh, here's my sound recorder i had it like hidden in different places uh, throughout each of these shots this time it was on the table couldn't see it so we can get these good sounds just as important as good visuals shot number two i set manual focus on my door handle here and to keep the intrigue of the sequence going i'm not quite revealing who i am yet or what I'm doing yet. Shot number three, get a nice wide shot here because not only do we want a variety of different shots from different perspectives, but we also want a variety of shots from different angles, tight, medium, wide, and mixing them up. And so that's what we did with shots four, five, and six. Number four, a little bit tighter, pretty much a medium shot looking at the door handle of my car. Number five, backed up just a little bit, got a wide shot of the back of my car. And then shot number six, completely different perspective, looking down overhead with the drone shot. So the next time you go out to shoot your next video, your next project, your next vlog, think where can I get another perspective? Instead of just getting this one shot, how can I get another angle? Should I get a tight, a medium, and a wide? Do I need to complement this tight with a wide to make it not feel so claustrophobic? So just take the little bit of extra time that you got because what I've learned is that you can always not use a shot that's easy, uh, kind of leads to overshooting, which I'm guilty of, but I don't necessarily mind it. On the other hand, there's been plenty of times where I was like, man, I wish I really would have got this shot while I was there, or wish I would have complimented this tight shot with this wide shot, or wish I would have got a medium there or a detailed shot here. So you can always not use something, but if you don't get something on location, and then it may be a situation where, well, today it was 
cloudy and it was nice soft light outside today it's sunny like how am i going to make these two fit together yeah it could just be a whole thing this is one thing that i love about youtube anytime that i'm learning something or processing something it always helps me to record myself doing it and to teach it to somebody else i think that's how we all learn best is by teaching something to someone else man thank you guys for watching uh, my name is cj if you're new here i'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and uh i guess i'll see you guys next time okay bye